It is my expectation that all the signatories to the peace accord and their supporters will abide by its content and secret. 2023 presents new hope for decency and decorum in campaigns as political actors are found to focus on issues and not personality attacks. A legal teeth and legal backing so that they can operate within the mandate of the statutory law establishing them. House of Representatives to fast track passage of bill for establishment of National Electoral Offensive Commission. Supreme Court affirms victory of Senator Ademola Adeleke for July 16 Ocean Government election. Hello and good evening. This is NT Network News. We are live in Abuja. I am Jumwe Yusuf. Hingino John Adams joins us from Vegas. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website nta.ng slash live and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen for updates. President Mohamedou Buhari says for Nigeria to effectively embrace sustainable development, institutions such as the legal profession must remain deeply committed towards promoting good governance. Speaking at the inauguration of the magnificent body of benches complex in Abuja, the president maintains that it is only when justice thrives that a society is assured of development. State House correspondent Adam Sambo has the details. The body of benches complex, a vigorous expression of the foresightedness of the founding fathers, leaders and members of the body consists of amongst others a 3,000 capacity auditorium, large banquet and multipurpose halls, meeting rooms, offices, library and courtroom for the legal practitioners disciplinary committee. The completion of this project is a manifestation of our consistent and collective efforts over the years. This is a major achievement for the body of benches. President Muhammad Buhari who described the body of benches as critical to the legal profession says he is unaware of any institution that has its membership cutting across all facets of government and the legal profession. Efforts by a body like this with over five decades of urban track record to keep the wheel of justice turning effectively in providing solid foundation for upholding the rule of law are commendable. Adherence to the rule of law the president maintains is critical to the progress of any society and his administration has not reneged on his commitment to this ideal. As the 2023 general elections draw near, the significance of the legal profession becomes even more pronounced considering the vital roles you play in the electioneering process, both at the pre- and post-election stages. I hope you maintain the position of an honest arbiter. On the welfare of judicial officers, President Buhari says he is not unaware of the passion and commitment of the body of benches in championing that cause, saying his administration is also committed towards this ideal. I have been intimated of the engagement of consultants by the body to, among the other things, come up with a fair review of the condition of service of judicial officers in Nigeria with other countries and jurisdictions within and outside Africa. I honestly look forward to the completion of this fair review and the submission of recommendation as this will assist us to review the welfare packages. Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Oluka Ede Ariola, described the realization of the body of benches complex as a boost to the entire legal profession in Nigeria. The challenges faced in time past and securing the defeating venue for the call to bar ceremonies will become a thing of the past. Our expectation, therefore, is very high that these gigantic enemies will be put to good use as legal practitioners. We must also realize that our practice 
as advocates and solicitors bear great impact on our nation and must therefore strive for the best always to sustain the legacies of the first while charting an assured future. We cannot afford to lower the bar in terms of good character and sound learning if we must retain public confidence. The body of benches composed of legal practitioners of highest distinction is responsible for the call to bar of persons seeking to become lawyers as well as ensuring highest standard of discipline within the legal profession. In Abuja, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshibaji was inaugurated a state-of-the-art edifice at the Nigerian Governor's Forum Secretariat. <laughs> The vice president, who did not deliver a speech during the event, dedicated the new complex for the service of God and humanity. The inauguration brought together present and past chairmen of the forum who shared experiences on how the actualization of the project came to bear. Now, all critical stakeholders in Nigeria's 2023 electoral processes have been tasked to conduct themselves in a manner that will not only guarantee the desired success, but also a smooth transition from one democratically elected government to another. President Muhammadu Buhari threw the challenge while engaging members of the National Peace Committee on efforts towards protecting and sustaining the nation's democratic enterprise. Against State House Correspondent Adil Sambu has the details. Members of the National Peace Committee, led by former head of state General Abu Salami Abubakar, were in the State House to brief President Muhammad Buhari on the outcome of their separate engagements with INEC chairman and heads of the nation's military and other security services on ways to deliver credible elections next year. They have reassured us of their commitments based on your directives to ensure that there is security, there is level playing field, where every individual, every party is allowed to play according to the rules uh, of the game. Let me also, on behalf of the Peace Committee, commend you, Your Excellency, in all your utterances in the international meetings, and especially your, your last remark during the anger uh, in which you promised Nigerians free and fair election and i think it's sending a big message not only to us in nigeria but to our sub-region where elections seem to bring violence and other things before this meeting with the president the national peace committee got presidential candidates of the various political parties committed themselves to conducting issue-based violence-free campaigns president buhari described it as the best way forward you may recall that former president Goodluck Ibele Jonathan and I signed the first national peace accord before the 2015 elections. It is my conviction that it contributed significantly to the peaceful outcome of the 2015 election. It is my hope that the National Peace Committee continues this important work post-2023. Credible, free, and fair elections, the president emphasized, can only be achieved in a peaceful environment. The signing of the Electoral Act 2021 as amended with landmark provisions underline my resolve for transparent and all-inclusive electoral processes. It is my expectation that all the signatories to the peace accord and their supporters will abide by its content and spirit. During the meeting, new members of the National Peace Committee were introduced to President Muhammad Buhari. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has welcomed the initiative undertaken by the National Peace Committee to commit all political actors 
to issue-based campaigns devoid of incitement, personal insults and attacks. This was during a video message to the signing of the first 2023 National Peace Accord by the presidential candidates organized by the National Peace Committee in Abuja. Dennis Adeogunui reports. The National Peace Accord, an ingenious concept that came into being eight years ago, was designed to promote peace and harmony in the nation's electoral process. President Mohamed Buhari called on all players to abide by the guiding principles of the peace accord, warning that the rise of fake news and misinformation have continued to pose a significant threat to democracy in Nigeria. I thank members of the National Peace Committee, led by its chairman, General Abdul Salam e. Abu Bakr, for their commitment and dedication to supporting peaceful elections in Nigeria and for facilitating peace generally across the country. As the President, I have always reiterated my commitment to peaceful, credible, and transparent elections. However, the rise of fake news and misinformation continue to pose a significant threat to democracy in Nigeria. It has shifted focus away from issue-based campaigns to amplifying the potential for personal attacks, insults, and incitement. The 2023 general election is more than an election. It is an opportunity to serve Nigeria, to defend Nigeria, and to uphold her unity and progress. Chairman of the Electoral Umpire, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, called on all players to abide by provisions of the Electoral Act 2022, saying the objectives of the peace accord must be jealously guarded. The Independent National Electoral Commission will vigorously want to comply to ensure that parties and abuses in terms of slander of language as well as insinuations or innuendo likely to provoke a breach of the peace during the election campaign. The signing of a second national peace accord designed to encourage politicians to accept the election results in good faith will take place shortly before polling day. In Abuja, Dennis at Dickon Louis, NT News. Still talking politics, Nigerian Youth Movement for Asiwaju is mobilizing youth across the country to ensure victory of APC presidential candidate Senator Bola Ahmed Tunubu in the 2023 polls. The group pledged its commitment during a familiarization and assurance visit to the APC Presidential Campaign Council in Abuja. The movement says Senator Tinibu is the right man for the top job in the country, considering his political antecedents and track records. Working together to function with a leader who is a true Nigerian, a leader who understands our diversity in religion and culture, a leader who will transform and change the economic situation of our country, who knows and believes in human capital development. You need cooperation of the state council, even the party officials. You have to show them. You have to work with them. You have to go out and show that you work with them. Don't isolate yourself. If you do isolate yourself, it will be very difficult for you to succeed. The APC Presidential Council says it will leave no stone unturned in accommodating the interests of all solidarity groups and movement for its candidates at all levels. As political parties kickstart campaign for the 2023 general elections, the House of Representatives has expressed commitment to fast-track passage of the bill seeking to establish the National Electoral Offences Commission. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that the Committee on Electoral Matters laid the report during plenary Thursday. The National Electoral Offences Commission Establishment Bill submitted for consideration contains provisions targeted at improving electoral process by blocking loopholes that enable violations by political actors. Plenary featured second reading of six bills, among them built to establish veterinary teaching hospital for universities, 
sponsored by House Chief Whip Mohammed Tahir Mungunu. To give legal teeth and legal parking so that they can operate within the mandate of the statutory law establishing them. Others are built to establish a federal infrastructure rehabilitation management agency sponsored by Okudeli Ezenwanko and built to establish a federal college of education Uboha sponsored by Sergius Ogun. Bill to establish National University Special Intervention Trust Fund from Kabir Al Hassan Rurum was among the five that passed first reading. Meanwhile, House has urged authorities to assist victims of Wednesday's tanker fire accident in Kogi State as moved by Abdullahi Halim's. Petroleum laden with petroleum motor spirit, PMS, lost control in Ampa Township, resulting in a fatal accident, leading to death of about 40 people. House members also supported the appeal from Abdul Qadi Rahis, urging relevant authorities to assist victims of flood disaster in Medukuri, Burnu State. The affected residents of the communities are currently facing untold hardship and the fear of impending seasonal flooding. The motions adopted are the need to address the deplorable state of Kefi Nyanya Road as raised by Gaza Jonathan and the call from Dachung Bagos, alerting authorities to activate response against Ebola disease. About 70% of federal government workers, business class and interstate commuters plying the routes spend four to five hours daily through and fro from their offices and other businesses. Nigeria has reason to be worried at the moment as a deadly Ebola virus can get into Nigeria through our borders or travelers coming into Nigeria for businesses. Plenary was adjourned to Tuesday, 4th October 2022. From the National Assembly, Ami Ali, NTA News. Time for some messages. We'll be right back. Do stay. The 62nd Independence Day Celebration Planning Committee announces activities lined up for the celebration as follows. Juma at Public Lecture. Date, Friday, 30th September 2022. Venue, National Mosque, Central Business District, Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. Special Juma Prayers. Venue, National Mosque, Central Business District, Abuja. Time, 1 p.m. Presidential Broadcast. Date, Saturday, 1st October 2022. Time, 7 a.m. Military Parade. Date, Saturday, 1st October 2022. Time, 8 a.m. Announcer, Planning Committee. We are committed to the unity of our great country, Nigeria. Let us support our armed forces. Let us stand together with them. Let us stand for them. Our symbol of unity. The gallant men and women of the armed forces on land. And see who have continuously put their life on the line protecting our lives, humanity, and nation. Let us join them and stick together as one, irrespective of our misunderstanding, be it political, cultural, or ideological. Our uniqueness is our oneness, our strength is our diversity. Let us stand by, stand with and support our armed forces to keep this nation together. Nigeria is my own. Nigeria is your own. Nigeria is our own. They say nothing good comes easy, but with determination and sheer focus, Boa Foods finds new ways to put food on many plates. We produce competitively priced sugar, flour, and pasta that are highly sought after by our corporate and trade partners. At Boa Foods, we remain committed to lead with purpose and make a difference by embracing the responsibility to meet Africa's growing food demand. We dare to lead. So can you. Boa Foods, nourishing life. You are kindly invited to grab your front row seat to watch The Future is Here, a gripping and inspiring play about Easy Land, a land that represents our collective dream for a more prosperous nation. The Future is Here is an Independence Day special command stage play about a nation on a journey to finding herself. Date, 1st and 2nd of October, 2022. Time, 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. Featuring two sessions each day. Venue, NAP Conference Center, number 1, 
Victor Fiati Umar Street, Kado, Abuja. To get your free e-tickets today, visit thefutureishere.live. For your free physical tickets, come to Vibes by Ands at Wuse 2, Taj Bank at Central Area and Renau at Garaki Area 11. Don't come alone. Watch the future is here. The Zenith Better Life promo is back and it's bigger and better. You could be one of 20 lucky customers to win 150,000 Naira every two weeks from now till January 31st, 2023. To qualify, simply open a Zenith Bank account and maintain a minimum balance of 5,000 Naira. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Member Representative Mala Madori Kaugama Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives, Abu Bakar Lema, and his family warmly facilitate with Sadona Ringim and Governor of Jigao State, Muhammad Badur Abu Bakar, on the occasion of his 60th birthday. The Almighty Allah continue to bless you with good health, wealth, and wisdom as you lead with honesty and integrity. Happy birthday, Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Jigao State, the People's Governor. Muhammad Badal Obakar. Happy birthday, sir. This is to invite the general public to the 62nd Independence Day Special Jumaat Prayers and Public Lecture. Date, Friday, 30th September 2022. The equivalent of 26 Safar, 1444 after Hijrah. Public lecture with the theme, Shura, the Islamic Foundation of True Democracy. Venue, Conference Hall, National Mosque, Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. Guest speaker, Professor Ahmed B. Dugarawa, ABU, Zaria. Chairman of the occasion, His Eminence, Al-Haji Muhammad Sa'ad Abu Bakar III, CFR, MNI, the Sultan of Sokoto, and President General, Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs. Special Guest of Honor, His Excellency, Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Special Jumaat Prayer, Venue, National Mosque Abuja, Time, 1 p.m. Professor Shehu Ahmed Said Galadanchi, CON, Murshid of the Abuja National Mosque, Announcer. <laughs> Welcome back. The federal government will continue to support micro, small and medium enterprises operating in the country and hopes incoming government will equally make this a top priority. This was one of the decisions taken as Vice President Yemi Oshibajo meets with partners in the micro, small and medium enterprises clinics and commended them for their cooperation in the implementation of the program, which he said was there to the president. The MSME clinics is a program aimed at providing necessary assistance to operators by tackling and preferring solutions at one-stop shop. NTA spoke to some of the team members after the meeting. We need express appreciation to his excellency for the leadership, the encouragement, and the innovation. And I personally feel that the MSME clinics uh, we definitely have the pride of place when we're writing the legacy of this administration. The MSME clinics that we've been having for the past uh, five years. Uh, he's been leading the group uh, to review what we have done and what needs to be done between now and the end of the administration. And outstanding um, share facilities that have not been commissioned will be commissioned. Some states have come to ask for one-stop shops. We'll try and help with that. The current administration we will work hard enough to make it very uh, comfortable and convenient for, for the next administration to be able to continue. As Nigeria marks her 62nd anniversary, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says there is need for a deliberate effort to create basis for United Nigeria. The Vice President was speaking at a lecture to mark Nigeria's 62nd anniversary in Abuja. He stated that the issues of equity, justice, rule of law and accountability are critical for achieving unity. The elite, when the elite fails to make the sacrifices that a nation requires to stay united and to believe in their nation enough not to destroy it. So it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility as the elite. Not because we are nice people. Not because we are men and women of great faith. No, but because in order to, to preserve even our own privileges, to preserve this society, to preserve this nation, we must make those sacrifices. 
The lecture was attended by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, Minister of Information and Culture, Laya Mohammed, among other dignitaries. To judicial matters now, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lohan, says he will not appeal the judgment delivered on Wednesday by the Federal High Court Dematru in Yobe on the Yobe North Senatorial District elections. In a statement he personally signed, Senator Lohan said he has accepted the judgment of the court which disqualified his candidature and participation in the elections. He said after due consultations with his political associates, supporters and well-wishers, he has decided not to appeal against the judgment. He assured Nigerians that he will continue to serve the nation in his personal and any other capacity at all times. Now, the Supreme Court has dismissed the appeal challenging the candidacy of Ademola Adedeke as the standard bearer of the People's Democratic Party in the July 16, 2022 governorship election in Osho State. The five-man panel of justices of the Apex Court, led by Justice Amina Adamo Augi, gave the verdict in a unanimous judgment in Abuja. The appeal, filed by Dotun Babayemi, a contender in the PDP governorship primary in Oshun, was dismissed for being filed out of time. Having filed the appeal out of time, robbed the Apex Court of Jurisdiction. The decision of the Supreme Court foreclosed all pre-election matters capable of challenging the candidacy of Ademola Adeleke as the governor-elect on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has reserved judgment in the appeal on the authentic Congress of the PDP in Edo State till Friday, 30th September 2022. Let's bring you up to speed with other news. The Buhari Media Organization has rated President Muhammadu Buhari's administration as the best in boosting private sector capacity. The media in a statement says, no administration in the country's history has done what President Muhammadu Buhari has done in the past seven years to drive the capacity of the private sector across segments of the economy. The BMO says the amount dispersed by the Central Bank of Nigeria through 37 interventions is a big testament to what the administration has been doing to make the economy more resilient. It notes that manufacturing and agriculture sectors attracted the most beneficiaries of the more than 93 billion naira dispersed by the CBN towards supporting critical sectors of the economy. The media group recognized Uncle Boro's program as one of the signature initiatives of the Bahari administration, stating that the program has so far dispersed one trillion naira as loan to farmers and out of which 400 billion has been paid back while many orders are not yet due. The meeting of the Africa First Lady Space Mission on the margins of the 77th United Nations General Assembly has ended with far-reaching recommendations towards addressing all forms of gender-based violence and other related issues affecting women and girls in Africa, especially in health, education and security. State House Correspondent Ali Kabir report. With the successful deliberations of the spouses of the African leaders under the platform of the Africa First Lady's Peace Mission, headed by the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, at the margins of the 77th United Nations General Assembly, participants are optimistic that women, youth and children will continue to benefit from the outcome of the meeting. The recommendations centered on issues for promoting the general well-being of women and children, as well as strategies towards the enhancement of security within the continent, with particular emphasis for the participation of women in armed conflict in all decision-making for peace-building and conflict resolutions. It is a very remarkable tenure of the First Lady in the sense that both at the regional, continental, as well as the global levels, she has been able to advance the cause of women. Now, this particular one is significant in the, in the fact that the world itself is today shaped and defined by issues of peace and security. And it's a very bold move um, that is, has been led by Her Excellency um, Dr. Mrs. Aisha Buhari as the president of the Africa First Ladies Peace Mission. She has now taken it upon herself to be the champion to push forward um, issues that are related to um, peace and insecurity. The meeting has also resolved to continue to engage all stakeholders from the UN agencies, the continent and other regional bodies, as well as non-governmental organizations, traditional rulers, civil society groups and the media to continue to advocate for women emancipation for the full attainment of gender equality 
women empowerment as well as focusing attention towards addressing gender-based violence. The side events focus mainly on women and, and girls because specifically these are a significant group in the peacemaking. So it was basically focused on them to see what can be done to really support the women and girls in kind of promoting peace in Africa. Our mother, the president of um, African First Ladies um, Peace Mission, joined the world leaders to advocate for peace. The event was successful, alhamdulillah. The meeting also advocated for more policy framework to support the recognition of equal opportunities for the female and male child in order to increase the rights privileges and opportunities of a girl child and to improve their meaningful contributions to national growth and development. The president of the Africa First Ladies Peace Mission, Aisha Buhari, reaffirmed that the mission will continue to support all efforts for the development of women and girls in Africa, particularly in the Sahel region, and their meaningful inclusion in decision making related to peace and security. From New York, Ali Kabir, NTA News. As the nation continues to pay attention to transportation system, the authority of the National Inland Waterways wants concerted efforts and support in harnessing the resources of the system. State House correspondent Jide Onifadi tells us more. Speaking at the 52nd session of State House Briefing, Managing Director of the National Inland Waterways Authority, George Hogalu, says great strides have been made by the authority and its objectives to make Nigeria the leader in inland water transportation, development, and management in Africa. But there are key policy initiatives which we have adopted in Newark. Some of them include a proposed amendment bill of the Authorities Enabling Act to empower the authority to better meet its mandate. We realize that the bill as it is today does not really provide us the needed authority for us to be able to actualize in full detail our mandate. And uh, I'm happy to say that National Assembly is giving it attention. He says the parastatal has not been without challenges, but the support from the federal government has been tremendous. Um, let me also appreciate government, because there's something unique. If you recall, the uh, local Geneva port is a big port, but it was abandoned before this government came. On the grounds, because of lack of funding by previous administrations, so the contractor kind of abandoned site. But this government reviewed the contract upwards and started the funding. So work is ongoing now. The strengthening of Inland Waterway Police Command. Provision of security patrol boats is currently being prioritized as more of the boats are purchased annually. Judge Mogalu, however, says to secure the feats achieved, we need the cooperation of all stakeholders. In the State House, Jude Onifade, NJ News. Time to join Hingino in Lagos for the next sector of reports. Hello, Hingino. Hello, Jumai. As the year peaks, the Federal Road Safety Corps has called for more collaboration from individuals and organizations in its advocacy against drunk driving at an event to launch a new round of campaign against the practice in Lagos. The Corps was emphatic that alcohol and driving do not mix. Adenita will complete the report. As a controlled operation of a vehicle, driving, whether on the highway or not, is said to require a lot of coordination, concentration and safety consciousness, all of which may be impaired by irresponsible consumption of alcohol. The Ember Month therefore provides another good opportunity to push the campaign and encourage road users to be responsible in their intake of alcohol while making plans for the road. In its plot and morals, that stage play captures the essence of the campaign. It also summarizes the message of the acting commercial of the Federal Safety Corps as it stressed the need for drivers, particularly commercial transport operators, 
to be wary of mixing business with pleasure. The sale of alcohol within garages are banned. But like I said, we are going beyond that. We want the driver to imbibe that culture of not driving and drinking or drinking and driving. Because there's still some other sources that you can get this alcohol. But as of the parks were banned. The solidarity with partners will witness rallies at motor parks where breathalyzer checks and advocacy talks will be carried out. But if all of the private sector get to understand that we share drivers who move around our goods on the roads, so if all of them have the same training and same message, it's likely that our roads are going to be safer. We share the same consumers, people who eat what you produce or who wear the clothes you produce. They also end up being our consumers in the evening of the brands we produce. So we share the same consumers and those consumers are Nigerians. Achieving zero fatality in the Ember Mounts is one of the key targets of the core for 2022. In Lagos, Adini Itaewo, MTN News. Talking health now, statistics by the World Health Organization indicates that nearly 18 million people die each year from heart-related issues, with 85% of these deaths being heart attack and stroke. It is to help roll back these numbers that Power Oil, the leading producer of heart oil in Nigeria, took to the streets to sensitize the public on the need for a healthy heart. Ruth Ario Samuel reports. Before power oil penetrated the Nigerian market, the level of consciousness about the unhygienic nature of unbranded vegetable cooking oil was significantly low, with less focus placed on the ill health effects of its consumption. These women say they have experienced the health benefits and quality nutrition that is the hallmark of power oil and can now attest to the fact that it is indeed Nigeria's number one cooking oil. Whenever I cook with a vegetable oil, it makes me stool. But since I started using power oil since 2013, in fact, I am free from those problems. Power oil is very good. It's used it in cooking. It's such a way you use it to prepare socks for your yam, for your vegetable. Mm. It's very good. This year's World Heart Day is another platform to raise awareness on how to live healthy. And the organization is out on the streets of Lagos to sensitize the public on the importance of exercise to the heart. Among all the vegetable oil, power oil is the best. It is low cholesterol, zero trans fat, omega-9, omega-6, and it's good for maintaining a good heart. So if, you're, if your heart is good, at least you visit less of the hospital. We are also today encouraging Nigerians to use, always use the pedestrian bridge for their safety and also for the health of their heart. Desirous of improving the condition of their heart, excited members of the public joined the early morning exercise. I know that exercise is very good for human life. They let us do exercise and give all this to them. I jumped 60 times, so I noticed that my body is okay for the, for the jump. So if I reach out, I'll be continuing to be jumped or do exercise. Standing on the two planks of healthy diet and exercise, the message was loud and clear. Healthy body begins with a healthy heart. In Lagos, Ruth Ario Samuel, NTA News. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. The news continues after this break. Is your line blocked? Then move to Glow. And experience extraordinary value with Bracket Air times 10. Simple, simple. Get 10 times for every airtime recharge. Up to double your data and free 1,000 Naira welcome credit. And it's for new and existing Glow customers. 10 times the value of every recharge you make. Get it only on Glow. Dial star 777 hash or get a Glow film today with Glow. Bracket Air times 10. Thank you, Glow. As part of the activities to mark the 26th anniversary of the creation of Eboi and 62 years of the independence of Nigeria, the state government has approved the following programs of events for the celebration of 1st October 2022. Friday, 30th September 2022, Juma Prayers, Central Mosque, Abakaliki, time 1 p.m. Novelty football matches, venue, Pangele Uruta Township Stadium, time 4 p.m. Saturday, 1st October 2022, Grand Final 
Mali to mark Nigeria's 62 independence celebration and 26th anniversary of the Boeing state creation and the second phase of the state empowerment program. Venue, Pa Ngelorota Township Stadium, Abakaliki, time 11 a.m. State Banquet, Venue, a Communical Center, Abakaliki, time 7 p.m. Sunday, 2nd October 2022, Thanksgiving service, Venue, St. Paul Parish, Onwe Boni, time 10 a.m. Please accept the assurances of the esteemed regards and best wishes of His Excellency, the Governor. Signed, Honorable Barrister Oji Uchenna Oji, Commissioner for Information and State Orientation. Mama, don't do that. Thank you for the time you have put. Mama, I don't have a time to sit down. Big mom, let me put the poster deal. Our teacher say COVID 19 vaccine, they said, Where, where? And go protect you, me, and all our family from COVID 19. Our teacher, Sabi Rudo, big mom, she mm -hmm. follow who no Rudo. My name is Dr. Chinoso Egemba. Then they call me a Proco doctor. The COVID-19 vaccine now obonge way to take protect you and your family from wahala sickness and death from COVID-19. Or you have to get your own free COVID-19 vaccine. Sharply go any healthcare facility when you are. It's never just your dream, but also of those close to you. It's never just your hustle, but also of those who believe in you. It's never just your disappointment, but also of those who share your hopes. It's never just your ambition, but also of those who have faith in you. Which is why it's never your success alone, but also of those who stood by you. Thank you. Hi there. Hello. You can price Sha, but you're always saving on everything except for here. This is where you're throwing money down the drain. Hi. On this cleaning product, impossible. You need the new Harpic Toilet Cleaner. With just one 30 Naira sachet of Harpic Toilet Cleaner, you save more. Harpic Stick Formula stays longer, so it cleans 10 times better. Wow, hey! And it's safe because it's only 30 Naira. Giving you a sparkling clean toilet and great savings too. <laughs> Plus the boss cream with another panda. This one now better than ten times. In just ten times, I can't figure the twenty cent you recharge. Bye, Mom. He's going to play in this weather. Uh huh. Why did you let him go? He might fall ill. And if he doesn't go out for practice, how will he win more trophies? To protect our family from illness causing germs during the rainy season, we use Dettol soap every day. Dettol with germ defense gives you protection. Rainy season brings a lot of germs. And Dettol soap's germ defense protects you from up to 100 illness causing germs. Dettol soap is endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Be Dettol Show. No matter what you do, Thanks for rejoining us. Information and Culture Minister Laya Mohammed has applauded moves to open business and investment between Nigeria and Saudi Arabia. The minister stated this when he granted audience to the President Nigeria Saudi Arabia Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture. Anthony Fossil reports. Expressing satisfaction that the relationship between the two countries is going beyond seasonal pilgrimages to business which will be beneficial to both nations, the minister said Nigeria and Saudi Arabia are world giants in their own right. So, going into business is a perfect move. Because it becomes not just a platform, but also a clearinghouse for proposers from 
from Nigerian businessmen and Saudi businessmen wanting to do business with one another. He noted that Nigeria Saudi Arabia Chamber of Commerce is not in any way a substitute to the seasonal pilgrimages. The relationship between Saudi Arabia and Nigeria should not be seen just from the narrow prism of Hajj and Umrah pilgrimage, but should be seen from the prism of two very important nations in the world creating a bridge through which there can be better cooperation for the two countries and their citizens. President of the Chambers, Ibrahim Usman, explained that the official trade volume between the two countries is at its lowest. There will be a 60 man delegation from Saudi, interministerial delegation from Saudi, coming because of the importance we attach to this matter, the Minister of Foreign Affairs decided that, look, it has taken so many years trying to get this joint commission done. And since it's taken so long, we have no option but to go by our original plan. And we realize that Nigerians have not taken advantage of Saudi's magnanimity by creating excellent windows of assistance to encourage bilateral as well as to support underprivileged businesses in countries like Nigeria. He said there are Saudi investors who are yearning to come invest in Nigeria, citing successful Saudi companies which Nigeria can partner with. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, MTA News. Now time to talk business. I'll start by telling you that the African Export Import Bank has launched a trade payment service, the AFP. It is an intervention designed to facilitate the settlement of international trade, open account terms on behalf of identified African financial institutions and their clients. The bank says the product is expected to address the banking challenges confronting African economies due to the withdrawal of many international banks from the continent whose exit is attributable to stringent regulatory and compliance requirements as well as cost. And the National Bureau of Statistics says it is deploying technology to enable easy and safer collection of data as well as working on a new security and crime survey to provide government with important information and evidence that can assist in tackling insecurity. The Statistician General of the Federation, Adeyemi Adeniro, said this at the annual conference of National Statistical Association in Kefi, Nasarawa State. So, since, like, the big data that Integration of production with use and application of the data and multiple dissemination platforms, we as professionals have to ensure that we do not get lost in this whole process. The contribution of statistics in a new and rapidly changing environment has become very important as reliable statistics are essential for measuring progress in reaching developmental goals. The Standard Organization of Nigeria says all products manufactured in Nigeria must have the mandatory conformity assessment a program MANCAP certification before they are sold to consumers and failure to comply will lead to loss of investment. We are not trying to scare them but we are trying to add value to them so that their product will be bought for local standard and with time will be for international standard also and taking a look at the market nigeria's equities market failed to sustain previous days gain as it dropped by 0.42 percent as investors lost 112 billion naira at the close of trading the all share index and market capitalization dropped from preceding day highs of 49,171.7 points and 26.531 trillion naira to 48,964.83 points and 26.419 trillion naira. Jai's Bank, Zenit Bank, and Veritas Capital Assurance led in volume of shares. That is Business News. Network News continues with Jumai. Thank you, Benny. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has ordered the arrest of a British national, James Norland, for jumping bail and failing to appear 
for trial. Justice Ahmed, Ahmed Mohammed gave the order in an interlocutory ruling in Abuja. Nolan, a director in the Process and Industrial Development Limited PNID, is standing trial alongside Luji Consult Limited and others in a money laundering case to the tune of $9.6 billion. Justice Ahmed observed that Nolan has broken the terms of his bail conditions offered him and therefore revoked the bail and issued a bench warrant. The court also ordered his surety to appear in court on the next adjourned date to justify why the bail bond should not be forfeited. Prosecution counsel Balasanga has earlier prepared to proceed with the cross-examination of one of the witnesses when the court was informed that the second defendant was nowhere to be found and efforts to ascertain his whereabouts proved abortive. He also told the court that investigations by the EFCC showed that the property given by the shorty in Gwagwalada, Abuja was not worth 100 million naira. Responding to the absence of Nolan in court, defense counsel Michael Ajawa claimed that his sudden disappearance was strange. He prayed the court to grant the defense time to ascertain his whereabouts. Now, the federal government says it will continue to ensure judicious use of recovered assets for the socio-economic development of the people and the nation. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami San, set up these in a message to the public engagement on the monitoring and use of recovered assets and the launch of the Monitoring Civil Society Organization's website in Abuja, represented by Director of Public Prosecutions of the Federation, Mohamed Babadoku Abubakar Malami, asserts that under the present administration, transparency has been introduced to the use of all recovered assets since 2016. The Attorney General of the Federation highlighted some of the numerous activities achievements the federal government recorded with the use of recovered assets he noted that the engagement of the civil society organizations in the use of the looted funds show the transparency in the process the event witnessed the formal launch of the monitoring civil society organizations website we'll take another breather don't go away we'll be right back <laughs> You're always running around. Keeping up with you needs a comforting touch from Huggies with the right stretch for how much you move. Huggies pants comfortably fit baby's tummy. Their 360 degree comfort fit waistband makes them easy to open and pull off and on. So baby can keep on exploring and you keep doing great mom. Now in a new look pack. And then I'm to you. Thank you. Hi there. Hello. You can price shop, but you're always saving on everything except for here. This is where you're throwing money down the drain. Hi. On this cleaning product, impossible. You need the new Hapic toilet cleaner. With just one thirty naira sachet of Hapic toilet cleaner, you save four. Hapic stick formula stays longer, so it cleans ten times better. Wow, hey! And it saves because it's only thirty naira, giving you a sparkling clean toilet and great savings too. Bye, Mom. He's going to play in this weather. Uh huh. Why did you let him go? He might fall ill. And if he doesn't go out for practice, how will he win more trophies? To protect our family from illness causing germs during the rainy season, we use Dettol soap every day. Dettol with germ defense gives you protection. Rainy season brings a lot of germs. And Dettol soap's germ defense protects you from up to 100 illness causing germs. Dettol soap is endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Be Dettol Show. Good morning, Nigeria. Year after year, they have informed, educated, and entertained us.
when you needed information, knowledge, or an escape. From generation to generation, the Nigerian broadcasting industry has worked tirelessly to serve you. And now, this service will finally be recognized. Right. This November, broadcasters all over Nigeria will gather for the maiden edition of the Nigerian Broadcasting Awards, an award ceremony set to reward hard work and unflinching excellence in the broadcast media. They have served and are still serving. It's time to say thank you. This award is organized by the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria. Bon. For more details, log on to www.tnbawards.ng and follow our social media handles at TNB Awards. Forget last season, forget the winners and the losers, forget every moment that stole the show because this is a brand new season on Gold TV and it's going to be bigger and better than any season before it with over seven leagues and cup competitions plus a World Cup. Make sure you get the best seats in the house this new football season. Get a decoder, Gold Tenner plus one month Gold TV Max for 6,900 Naira only. Bigger season, greater football. Gold TV, love it. You are welcome back. A multiple accident involving a bullion van belonging to one of the second generation banks and four other vehicles along Argugum Bunin Kebi Road in Kebi State has claimed six lives, including three policemen. Ibrahim and Hamidu reports. The unfortunate incident involving four vehicles, including the bullion van heading for Brinning Kebi, according to a lone eyewitness, happened in the course of a hot pursuit against one of the vehicles laden with jerry cans of petrol suspected to be smuggled. That resulted to a head collision with the moving bullion van, sparking an inferno that affected five other vehicles. I was sitting down by the roadside, then all of a sudden, I heard a screeching sound of tires and then a big bang, and I saw cars on fire. Five other policemen sustained injuries at the scene but were rushed to Federal Medical Center in Burning Kebi. Both Kebi Police and Customs Command commiserate with the state and families of those affected assuring that circumstances surrounding the incident will be thoroughly investigated, findings of which will be made public. In Brunin Kebi, Ibrahim Hamidu, NTA News. An Ampa community has again been thrown into mourning and confusion over yet to be a confirmed number of persons who lost their lives in a tanker explosion on the Mobolo Bridge along Otupo Road, Kogi State. Michael Abeji reports. Ampa was in the news weeks ago reporting tragedy following heavy gun attacks on the central police stations and two commercial banks by armed gunmen. The recent tanker explosion, which yet to be confirmed and accounted number of persons, has thrown the town into further darkness. The trailer fell from that hill there. So on reaching down that place, there is a sand that flood brought to that place. The trailer now hits the sound and the driver leaves this country. As a time of this report, official of the Federal Road Safety Corps and the police declined to comment. The officer in charge of the National Orientation Agency at the Council, Mr. Mwazo Maklo, could not give an exact number of victims in both the tanker, other vehicles and road users, including school children believed to have been killed in the explosion. What we are working on now is people coming to declare their people missing. Because nobody can give you exact figure as at now. Some vehicles were born to arches with the occupants. We didn't know how many people were in those vehicles. But the one we can ascertain now, at least almost 20 persons bodies have been picked. The owner of Angpa, al Haji Abdul Malik Omar, while commiserating with the bereaved families in his domain, lamented the losses and called for the establishment of fire service stations at the local level. We are calling on the federal, go federal state government to take a look at our, our population and come to our aid. We need the fire service to be located in Angpa here. Some remains were recovered at the scene of the accident, while some were burnt to ashes from Angpa. Michael Abiji, NT News. And that's it on the news tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Jumai Yasuf. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.